In today's video, a viewer asked me, what was my favorite piece of gear to review since I've been on YouTube? So I went through all my videos and uh, picked out 10 of my favorite pieces of gear, and I'm gonna share with you what they are and why, but I also want to make it clear that I'm only going to be talking about gear up until 2021. That way we don't have to worry about the honeymoon effect. If I just reviewed it a week ago or a month ago, I might be skewed by that. So this is gear that I've kept for some period of time and why. So let's start with number 10. Number 10 is a piece of gear I reviewed last year. It's the LPD 87 Deluxe pedal. Now I've reviewed the original 87 pedal and I like that. So of course I thought I would like the LPD 87 Deluxe as well, but I was shocked how much more I like it. If you watch that video, I actually compare the two pedals and uh, here it is on my main board. This is my main board that whether you know it or not, this is in a lot of videos every day. I did however change the knobs and it's because I really like to be able to see them when they're on the floor and I like the white with the black uh, black line contrast, it's just easier for me to see. It's very important when you're, uh, whether you're on stage or if you're demoing a piece of gear that your settings are where you expect them to be. So I like to be able to double check that and not have to tape all the knobs down. Number nine is my Warwick Streamer Bass. Now this is a custom bass. <laughs> This is a 32 inch scale bass. So this bass is just a little shorter. It's not considered a short scale. It's actually considered a medium scale bass. And uh, it was a little scary when I ordered this. I didn't know if the decisions I made were gonna be the right ones. One of the concerns I had is this body is a solid piece of maple. It's actually two pieces, but either way it's solid. And so usually a big hunk of maple is going to be heavy. Now, even though I went through every maple block in that factory and found the lightest block I could find, I still was a little concerned, but actually the bass weight is perfect. It plays fantastic. I've gigged with it so many times already. Uh, in fact, I've I've uh, even put my first dent <laughs> in it at a gig. And uh, so it's my, it's my base. It's my, it's my, it's my home. Number eight is a Gibson SG. Now this one, I, I didn't know what to expect. I've always played Les Pauls and the SG just never appealed to me. I don't know if it was because of looks or what about it didn't do it for me, but it just didn't do it for me. And after trying so many guitars and not being as happy as I, I thought I could be playing them, I thought, why not give an SG a shot? So when I purchased this SG, I have to admit, I absolutely love it. In fact, this instrument is one of my most played instruments. It's really just a go-to for me. Number seven is an interesting review because I was asked last year to review Music Nomad products. And so I went through a big chunk of their product line and I have to say a lot of their products were very good, but one in particular really kind of amazed me. So much so that I used up the, the bottle that they gave me and then I bought a big bottle. So I'm gonna show you that. It's the Music Nomad F1 Oil. I pretty much live on this stuff now when it comes to working with guitars. Now I do use, I also bought a big one of their guitar polish as well. Um, and I like to point out, like I said, even though they sent me the original bottle, um, I liked it so much that I just bought the big bottles when I ran out of that stuff. I use it on my customers' guitars, my guitars. One of the things I like about it is you can use it on maple, you can use it on rosewood. Very impressed. Obviously, like I said, enough to buy it in the uh, bulk size bottle. This is the eight uh, fluid ounce bottle. So they make them uh, much smaller, I think like two ounce bottles. That's what I'd recommend for the uh, average player out there. Uh, get the smaller bottle. But like I said, this doesn't probably look that big, but I had to use a lot of it to go through that small bottle and I was using a lot. Number six is my Kiesel Theos guitar. What's interesting about this guitar was I had a Sir Modern kind of like on my sights uh, and I was even thinking maybe about the Pete Thorne guitar and I had a bunch of Ibanez AZs uh, made in Indonesia and Japan, loved them all. And so I said, okay, obviously I'm, I'm attracted to this style of guitar. It's like the super strat body style, uh, dual humbuckers, roasted maple neck. Just, I wanna see you know, how it goes. And this one has a slightly larger body, whether it looks like it or not, this body is just slightly larger than you normally see on those type of guitars. And um, I have to say, since I've had it, I absolutely love it to the point where I've got rid of all my AZs, but one. Number five is the zither stand. 
This is a stand that lets your guitar balance. I even did a video where I tried to knock over the guitar. And of course I didn't try that hard, but I tried pretty hard, harder than you'd want to with a guitar. What I love about this stand is that it's not just a cool looking stand, but functionally it, it works perfect for what I need it for. It uses the string swing cradle, which uh, anyone who follows this channel knows I only use string swing uh, products uh, for the last 25 years. That's all I've used is their hangers. So, that's what I use. And uh, this one I customized a little bit with my, my logo on it. And uh, these are what I use every day. Number four is the Malin M preamp. M standing for Marshall. This is a Plexi preamp pedal. This is an all tube preamp, that's it. It's not any kind of amplifier, it can't amplify anything. This is just exactly like a Marshall Plexi in every way, kind of like my Marshall uh, JMP uh, 21 and my, I don't know if you see it high, but I have a Marshall Plexi up, up high. And what this allows me to do is I run this into my cab M and that simulates the power section, the speakers in the room. And then I run that into my interface for recording and I can then run it out to other external speakers, uh, including I have an FRFR that I use in the room if I need a little monitor. And this is my kind of Marshall Plexi anytime I want it, any volume. And I know what you're thinking, I could put an attenuator on my Marshalls and you're absolutely right, I do that as well. But I have to say, this sounds better than my Marshalls. Keep in mind, this thing costs a lot. This is not for someone who's just kind of thinking this will be an impulse buy. This is for someone who literally, uh, like, what, or like I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great if I just had a Marshall where I could have it at any volume, anytime I want. So this is it, it's mostly used for recording. Number three is my Fender Magnificent 7. Uh, this is something I reviewed a couple years ago. This was a limited edition run. It's basically a Fender American Standard Telecaster, but it had the matching painted headstock in the seafoam green. This one is always a fun guitar to talk about because depending on which camera I'm using, <laughs> it's different colors. Sometimes people think it's blue. Sometimes people think it's surf green. It, uh, I always tell people it looks like uh, a bar of Irish Spring. That's pretty much what it looks like. This one is a great guitar. What's interesting about it as well is it also has another one of my favorite products I reviewed. So it's a kind of a bonus because it's in one product, which is the Rock Rabbit plate. Now you can get these plates from other manufacturers as well, but Rock Rabbit's the one that sent one out to me. Obviously it's, uh, it's just a plate for your telly, but what it allows you to do is turn your switch slightly at an angle. Just makes it a little easier to get to and work with. Absolutely love the switch, obviously the plate, I should say. Still using it, still using this telly to this day. Now number two is a little tricky. It's uh, basically a product that has two products in it. And what it was, was the Lag High Vibe. And what that was, was a partnership between Lag Acoustic Guitars and High Vibe, which is a system that allows you to play an acoustic with not only having reverb built in and effects, which you've seen before in other units, but it added some features you didn't see, loop and record with it. Impressive. Now, I really, really like that item, except for I really kind of like the acoustics I already have. I didn't really want their acoustic. And I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great if these features were in my acoustic? Well, you'll be seeing a video soon, <laughs> but uh, High Vibe sent me all the stuff, the guts, this is just a piece of it, all the guts to install into one of my acoustic guitars. So um, there will be a video, uh, a la kind of sharpen my ax, where we'll be installing the high vibe system into one of my acoustic guitars. And then I'll be showing you the uh, high vibe system again, but with my acoustic guitars. Now, um, high vibe does sell this system now to the public. So if you want to buy one and have it installed or install it in one of your acoustics, you can. Now, the number one product, here it is, my favorite product that I reviewed since I've been on my channel. Single fireball sitting right behind me. Here's why. Uh, when I made this list, and of course on this piece of paper, you can see I made lots of different 
uh, ideas. I wrote down all these products and then I shuffled them and said, okay. And trust me, there was a lot of runner ups. My Squire that I had plecked, it was definitely on this list. The DK24, uh, Charvel was definitely on this list. I'm sure a lot of you'd be upset because some of you guys probably like some products and videos and it's just not on the list. Now keep in mind, it doesn't mean I didn't like those products or still don't use them. Just you gotta make a number and today's number was 10. But the but the Ingle Fireball 25, it's not only an amp that I use a lot, and since I've had it, I've been using it more and more. In fact, it's one of the few things I can say that when I started using it, I started using it regularly, now I'm just finding myself going to it all the time. It does everything I need it to do. I really stand behind the video I reviewed of that where I said it doesn't, it's not better than any amp I own. It just does all the amps that I own good enough for me to use it. Now I know a lot of you are going to be like, what about this product? And what about that product? And keep in mind, this is again, this is my top 10. These are the 10 pieces of gear that I really feel connected to. There's a lot of great gear. I've reviewed a lot of gear. There's a lot of videos. So I can't just put it in. I have to make a top 100 video to put it all in. But this is the top 10 and why I like it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I was thinking about doing another one, the top 10 pieces of gear I regret getting rid of after reviewing them. And if you're interested in that video, I'll make sure that comes next. Just give this video a thumbs up, put in the comments you'd like to see that video. I will definitely make that video happen if that's something interesting to you. As always, I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out, especially to the end of the video. Till the next time, know your gear.